it really is a pleasure for the Women's Fellowship to anchor this project in the name of Kingsgate Church. We are just the anchors. So we want that. It's a Kingsgate United Church-wide mission. And it's our 10th year that we are celebrating today. Sister Sheila, I want to answer you when you said I didn't make allowance for you to, um, you know, for this song. But Brother Rahim, all I know is Jesus loved me, this I know. I didn't know this other one at all. But I am so happy that you all enjoyed every moment of it. Thank you so much, Brother Rahim. The church has a future. And guess what Sister Rose said? That we have to, you know, have to return. And she gave that acronym and gave all the various things. I captured some, not all, you know, but I remember her saying that we have to bear in mind that we have to cater to different age groups and different in, um, areas of our church. Young people, old ones like me who like to sing the hymns, but those like to sing choruses. So we have to minister to a gathered group and we all do not um, worship the same way. What is important is that we are worshiping the one and the true God. Amen. So mine is a very distinct pleasure and privilege to introduce to you this lady who has now become my friend. And you know, before I tell you about her, she's such a person. When I asked her to be the speaker, she said, Boy, oh, Sister Sharon, it. It's rough, you know, I have something in the morning. I said, Lord, what are we going to do? Now we really wanted you to do it, you know. And oh boy, sister sharing it, and sister sharing it. And I said, We leave it in the hands of the Lord. And then later on, she, she called and said, Sister Sharon, Lord, I have some good news for you. Say it quickly. She said, You know, um, I managed to change that appointment that I had. Instead of speaking in the morning session, I speak in the afternoon session. Give God the glory. And then earlier this week now, when, you know, we're crunching down and we're getting a little worried. Um, I don't hear from Sister Marsha. I wonder what happened. Then the phone, um, no, I called her and she answered she was at the hospital, university hospital, with some she had taken for, to get treatment and then she became ill. We said, Lord, cover her. And believe me, two days later she said, Sister Shurnett, everybody knows that if I were even dying, I'm going to show up. So we thank God for helping her to show up. <laughs> the profile of Reverend Marsha Edwards Brown. Marsha Edwards Brown is an ordained minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ in the Moravian Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. Her home church is the Portmore Moravian Church, and she currently serves as a pastor of the Redeemer Congregation. She has served in different capacities at the local and district levels. Reverend Marsha received her training at the United Theological College of the West Indies, Mona. Before entering, answering the call to ministry, she worked as a production assistant with the Jamaica Information Service and later as a teacher of English language and literature. Reverend Marsha is passionate about ministry through the performing arts and has invested much over the years helping the youth express themselves through the arts. In the recently held inaugural Provincial Youth Awards in the Cayman, Jamaica Island province, she received the Long Service Award for over 20 years of leadership and unswerving commitment to the church's youth ministry. Reverend Marsha believes that teaching the word of God is essential for the transformation and empowerment of people and that one can only mature spiritually through daily application of the word and maintaining a connection with God through prayer. Today, our guest speaker, guest preacher, the Reverend Marsha Edwards Brown, will speak to us on the sub-theme, Vine Connection Bears Fruit. 
Can you welcome her, please? Shall we give the Lord the highest praise this morning? Hallelujah. Truly, our hallelujahs belong to the Lord because he deserves nothing less. Amen? Bless the Lord. Let me take the opportunity to greet our host pastor, Reverend Bacchus. Reverend Dr. Dave Hazel, one of my favorite lecturers from UTC. Very happy to see you this morning, Rev. Mrs. Oh, let me backtrack. Dr. Bacchus' wife is right next to him. Sorry. Reverend Bacchus' wife is right next to him. I don't know if I'm prophesying anything this morning. But <laughs> Reverend Bacchus. I greet you, Lady my, uh, Bacchus. Mrs. Wedderburn, who in her greetings this morning gave about half of my speech Reverend Dr. Nelson and his wife who escorted me up this morning, my friend and I, she found us in the parking lot and escorted us here. The worship leaders, I greet you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus and Mrs. Shernet Smith, my friend. We have not met in a very long, 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 long time, but we have become very good friends, very good friends, and it is my absolute privilege and pleasure to be here to share with you this morning in the capacity of guest speaker. <laughs> I don't preach from a laptop, so I am here to speak this morning. If the preaching comes on, then that's quite fine. We go where the Lord leads this morning. Amen. I congratulate Kingsgate for taking the time out to meet and to talk to God. As you position yourselves for this new year. We at Redeemer, we had our prayer breakfast on the 20th of January under the theme, Power Through Prayer. Because we recognize, brothers and sisters, that a church without prayer is a powerless church. A church without prayer is a powerless church church so what you are doing here i really congratulate you and trust that we will maintain the connection because more than ever we need this more than ever we have to live at knee city brothers and sisters in this time and season so brothers and sisters we're just going to reason together this morning and ask the lord to lead wherever he wants to lead as we come to hear another word from him. A word that will resonate with us. A word that will touch something on the inside. That will bring about transformation in areas that need to be transformed. As we seek to mature in him. Let us pray. Ever faithful God. We thank you for this morning. We thank you. For calling us together in this fashion. To lay our cares at your feet. We know God that you remain the way maker. The heavy load sharer. The burden bearer. You are all of that and so much more. We have come, Lord, not just to lay our burdens at your feet, 
but we have come seeking the guidance of the Holy Spirit. God, unless you speak to us, we will be confused. Unless you lead the way, we will end up down the road of destruction. Unless we connect with you, Almighty God, through prayer, we will be a powerless church. And so, Almighty God, even as we've come today, we ask that you will position us now to hear from you. Open our ears, Almighty God. Remove all the distractions that we know are lurking around. The overactive minds even now, Almighty God, thinking of things yet to be done. The guilt, almighty God, of having done things we should not have done. The pain we may be feeling physically, mentally, emotionally, otherwise, God. We lay them down now. And we place you at the highest place. We bow down and we worship you. Consume us now, almighty God, with the fire of your sweet Holy Spirit. Uproot everything. That needs uprooting now almighty God. Empty us God. Of all carnal weakness. So that there will be space almighty God. So that you can deposit. Your Holy Spirit in us with new vigor, a new zeal, Almighty God, to burn for you. And say, we say, speak, Lord. Your children are listening. May we never be the same again. After hearing you speak to us today. We give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we are reflecting on the theme. Vine connection bears fruit. Vine connection bears fruit. And the focus text was read earlier. And so I will not read it again. But I will refer to it from time to time. I'll begin by defining the term vine. And a vine, according to the, 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 the Merriam-Webster dictionary, is a plant whose stem requires support and which climbs by twining or creeping along the ground. Another definition, a weak-stemmed plant that derives its support from climbing, twining, or creeping along a surface. And there are different types of vines. We have vines that are beneficial and we have vines that are destructive. So, for example, we have a vine like the honeysuckle for those of us ladies especially who love plants and we have trailing plants running along the fences and so on. We will know the honeysuckle and it is a very beautiful vine and we get beautiful flowers and the fragrance coming from the flowers just absolutely beautiful. And so we have vines like those that are what I'll call aesthetically pleasing to us especially us ladies who love plants. But then you have some vines, brothers and sisters, some parasitic vines. There is one, for example, that I believe all of us know. We call it the love bush. And that is some crazy kind of love, I tell you. The daughter plant that when you just need to get one little piece of that vine onto a plant and very soon it has spread and taken over the entire plant and it feeds on that plant. 
it gets it's little, what, what, what they call, there, there is, let, let me find the word, astoria. These are some little stems that they get and they attach themselves to the host plant and they suck the nutrients out of this plant. And if you should watch, just look and see what happens to the plant at the end of that. Some crazy kind of love. I don't know why we call it love bush. <laughs> Because it sucks the life, literally sucks the life out of whatever plant it attaches itself to. So we have vines that are beneficial and we have vines that are destructive. We know we have another lovely vine, the grape vine. All of us know the grapes and we love to eat the grapes and we love its byproducts. We have the grape juice and we have grape wine, you know, that makes some of us feel quite merry, you know, depending on how much of it we consume. But then we don't want to be like the other vine, attaching ourselves and just sucking the life out of whatever it is that we attach ourselves to. So those are the vines in a nutshell. Then we come to the term connection. And to be connected means to be brought together or into contact so that a link is established. To be connected means to be brought together or into contact so that a link is established. And we have some synonyms here. To be connected means to be related to, to be linked, to be joined. To be interdependent, to be tied together, to be united. These are just some synonyms for connection. And then we get to an interesting term, the term that was read earlier. It's, it's, it's in our focus text from John chapter 15. The true vine. The text that was read, we see Jesus declaring, I am the true vine. I am the true vine. And implicit in this declaration is the thought that there is a false vine or a fake vine, a defective vine, a failed vine. So there is the true vine on one hand and then there is the defective, the, the, the false vine. And what is this false vine or this failed vine? This failed vine, this false vine is Israel. And this can be supported by several references from the Old Testament. And I'm going to highlight a few of them. So Psalm 80, for example, describes Israel as a vine brought out of Egypt and planted like a plant potted and traveled and transplanted in a foreign land. Grown vast with boughs like cedars, but latterly burned with fire in judgment. Wasted and forlorn, fruitless, carried off to another land, uprooted. That's Israel being referred to as the vine. Then in Jeremiah chapter 2 verses 19 to 21, God is talking to Israel through the prophet Jeremiah and listen to this. God says, your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuke you. Consider then and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord your God and have no awe of me declares the Lord Almighty. Long ago, you broke off your yoke and tore off your bonds. You said, I will not serve you. Indeed, on every high hill and under every spreading tree, you lay down as a prostitute. I planted you like a choice vine of sound and reliable stock. How then did you turn against me into a corrupt wild vine? This is Israel, the failed vine, the false vine, the corrupt vine. 
And I'll just give one more reference. Ezekiel 19, 10 to 13. And this is a lament about Israel by the prophet Ezekiel. And he says, Your mother was like a vine in a vineyard, planted by the water, fruitful and full of branches by reason of abundant water. Its strong stems became rulers' scepters. It towered aloft among the thick boughs. It was seen in its height and with the mass of its branches. But, hmm, there is a but. The vine was plucked up in fury. Cast down to the ground. The east wind dried up its fruit. They were stripped off and withered. For its strong stem, fire consumed it. Now it is planted in the wilderness in a dry and thirsty land. And we know about Israel in captivity in Egypt, in Babylon because of their constant disobedience. And so all of these references show that Israel failed to be the vine that it was intended to be. And so here Jesus is declaring, I am the true vine. Where Israel failed, I will not fail. I will fulfill the purpose that God intended me to fulfill. And so I want to get that in our minds this morning as we reflect on the theme, vine connection bears fruit. Yes, vine connection bears fruit. But I challenge all of us here this morning, brothers and sisters, to ask ourselves the following questions. Firstly, what vine am I connected to? And secondly, what fruit am I bearing as a result of my connection to that vine? I challenge us to ask ourselves these questions this morning. Because I pointed out earlier that not every vine is beneficial. It's not every vine that we want to connect to. Because there are some vines that are going to suck the lives out of us. Leaving us dry. Empty. Of no use to God. Unable to actualize our God-given potential. And so we ask ourselves, what vines, what vine am I connected to? Some of us are connected to the grapevine. And this is not the vine that gives us those nice juicy fruits. This is that behind my back, unofficial way of spreading information. Gossip, you know, we, we love to connect to the grapevine. And we hear everything that we need to hear about our brothers and our sisters. And we forget that as children of God, we are called. You know, we said, if, if, if our brother or sister is overtaken in a fault, what do we do? Hmm? We restore such a one in the spirit of love and meekness. But we love to stay in the grapevine because it is very juicy around here. Very juicy. And we believe even things that don't go so. Because most times you know that the grapevine. Oh my God. All kinds of things. The greatest mathematicians abide in the grapevine. They add things to the story. They subtract what is supposed to be. I mean, we don't want to be connected, brothers and sisters, to the grapevine. We don't want to be connected to the grapevine. What vine are you connected to? Some of us are connected to the vine of false beliefs. False ideologies. Beliefs that substitute biblical principles for public opinion. For man's human opinion. 
what vine are you connected to? Some of us are connected, and this is a very sticky one, to the vine of tradition. And we are so connected to traditions instituted by man from time immemorial. Some of us will say from Wapi Kill Philip. And we are so connected that as church we become irrelevant. We become ineffective. Because while the world is moving on, we are still back in the days. Clueless as to what it is that we are called to do. The late Jack Welch, an American businessman and chemical engineer, he says this. And this is in relation to business, but I believe it is quite applicable to us as church. He says, if the rate of change on the outside exceeds the rate of change on the inside, the end is near. Can I say that again? If the rate of change on the outside exceeds the rate of change on the inside, the end is near. Hmm. Let us think on these things. So I say to us, brothers and sisters, that while we must ensure that our foundation remains the biblical principles that we must find innovative ways of dealing with and connecting with people as time changes. Otherwise, the unchurched will remain unchurched. And we who are in church will just continue going through the motions and we wither away and we die. If the rate of change on the outside exceeds the rate of change on the inside, the end is near. The end is near. What vine are you connected to? Some of us are connected to the vine of a wrong mindset. Wrong thoughts. Thoughts that keep us you know, from actualizing our God-given potential. So we feel that things can go on without us. Sister so-and-so will do that. And brother so-and-so will do that. They don't need my two cents. After all, she can do it better than I can. And then we stay in the corner and we watch everything else going on. And we become spectators in the church. We become spectators. Hmm? And we can't feel the fire burning unless sister is singing the praise and worship song. We can't find a song in our hearts for ourselves. Somebody has to come and wind us up and pump us up. And at the end of it, the worship leader is tired. The pastor is falling over because everybody is depending on everybody to get some energy. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Things are falling apart in my life, but I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I cannot see how things are going to play out in my favor tomorrow, but I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart because the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. So if we have the wrong mindset, we are going to stay starving spiritually we fold up and die as Christians when we are told if we just praise that's where God is inhabiting our praises and where God is things must change things must change you know so we just sit down and we just fold up and die wrong mindset and then at the other end of the spectrum, we have those with an inflated self of, sense of self. An inflated sense of self. So self-importance takes precedence over humble service. 
And we feel that if we are not the ones doing something, it cannot be done. And we feel as if we are not the ones giving the suggestion. Things are not going to go right. And if our suggestion is not the one that is taken and implemented, then we sabotage. It's your suggestion, so you do it. <laughs> eh? It's your suggestion, so you do it. And we don't recognize that we cannot sabotage God. <laughs> None of us is indispensable. God will move us out of the way because God's purpose must be accomplished. What vine are we connected to? Some of us, I would say, are connected to the vines, the vine of works. So we are constantly going. We are constantly planning the fundraisers, fundraisers. And we are constantly meeting in different committees. And we have a meeting about one thing. And then we have another meeting to discuss what was discussed in that meeting. And we are constantly moving. Very busy. Very, very, very busy. Buzzing with activities. And all of these activities are important. But. <laughs> there is a but. Because sometimes we find ourselves so engaged so taken over by the work that we tell ourselves spiritually so we become spiritually malnourished spiritually malnourished because there's no balance between the activities of our personal connection with the true vine the nutrients not reaching us what vine are you connected to some of us are more connected to sensationalism emotionalism than we are to the corrective voice of the holy spirit we want to be jumping and feeling good and the music nice and church was good today and pastor message was good today and all of those things. Hmm? And we feel nice and good when Reverend Max comes and preach a nice sermon. One that soothes us. You know? One that just powders. Powders and fans us with cool breeze. <laughs> but when we hear a word to challenge our sinful ways, we get puffed up. We get puffed up because the truth is some of us love to hug up our sweet little sins. Hmm? That's where we are comfortable. That is between me and God. You don't need to come and preach that to me. Sister, you don't need to tell me that. That is between me and God. And we cannot take correction. Hmm? Failing to recognize how important that is for our spiritual growth. What vine are we committed to? The vine of unforgiveness. And as we come to pray this morning, what will not be fun unless we disconnect from the vine of unforgiveness. Some of us are connected to altars that we have no business connecting with. Relationships that go against God's design for us. God's command to us. Mm. What vine are we connected to? Vine connection bears <laughs> Vine connection bears fruit. But if we are connected to any of these vines that we just mentioned, the fruit that we bear will be fruit of, un of unrighteousness. Fruit of unrighteousness. Ephesians 5 and verse 11 says, Have no fellowship with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. We're not supposed to be hugging them up. Connecting to them. Have no fellowship with the fruitless deeds of darkness. God is light. Jesus is light. And darkness and light cannot mix. Hmm? So whatever we connect ourselves to must be things that reflect the light of Christ. Yes, vine connection. Bears fruit. What fruit are we bearing? As children of God. The kind of fruit that we the church. Is expected to bear. Is fruit worthy of repentance. Matthew 3 and verse 8. We saw John, John the Baptist in the wilderness. And he was preaching and baptizing. And he saw the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming. 
to the place of baptism and he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit, keeping with repentance, worthy of repentance. And do not presume to say you to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. So as brothers and sisters, do, do, let us not fool ourselves into thinking that we are entitled to anything. Let us not think that we are indispensable. Because God's plan is going to go on. Whether we are engaged or involved or not. I hope that all of us can say this morning, ain't no rock that's going to stand in my place as long as I am alive to glorify his name. Ain't no tree that's going to wave its branches. I am going to lift my hands to glorify his name. Ain't no bird that's going to sing in my place. I am going to lift my voice to glorify his name. So our claim to be children of God must be evidenced by the way we live. It is the lived out word. The lived out word. The word that says we are to love God. And above him there is no one else. No foreign God is going to take his place. The word that calls us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And this is a tricky one because some of us don't love ourselves very much. You know that? Some of us don't love ourselves very much. But as children of God, we are a royal priesthood. Hmm? Some of us just barely hanging on. The vine not holding on at all. We're not, we're not holding on to the true vine. We're not holding on to the true vine. We're holding on to other vines. So we must be connected to the word that calls us to love, to forgive. We must be the voice of justice for those who are being abused and exploited. We must rescue the perishing, care for the dying. And everybody knows I talk about this a million and one times that sometimes as church, we are not very kind. We see our young people, especially many of them falling out because they may have gotten pregnant out of wedlock and all of those things. And what, what do we do with them? We leave them. We leave them because what? They are a disgrace on the church. They're bringing down the name of the church. If that's how we think, then we have a false understanding of the church. Our perspective of church is warped. If that's how we believe. Because we are called to mend the broken. Exactly. We must be the hospital for the wounded. Rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. Snatch them in pity from death and the grave. Hmm? What are we connected to? What are we connected to? Rick Warren, and most of us will hear of Rick Warren, you know, popular author, writer of purpose-driven church, purpose-driven life, and so on, pastor of Saddleback Church. He says, the world has never been more connected. Companies are laying millions of miles of fiber optics and shooting satellites into space. Kids all around the world are texting each other on cell phones, even in the midst of jungles. <laughs> Yet when you talk to people, people feel more disconnected. Isn't that the truth? As many of us can be in a room and nobody's talking to anybody because everybody is hooked up to their own personal device, doing their own little thing, in their own little corner. And we can just go home and press our remote. And the gate opens. 
and we just drive in and press it and the gate closes and we don't have to see our neighbors and our neighbors don't have to see us. <laughs> and we have no idea what is going on with anybody. So disconnected. So disconnected. And we see this pandemic came and ushered in a new era. Hmm? And we as church, we have gotten caught up in it. And we know that fear is still gripping some people and they have stayed away. But some have just become comfortable and complacent. Because I can still be in my nighty and lie down. And what I just said is a reality. We, we were live online one, one day. <laughs> and one person did not realize that the camera was on. And church was going on. And she was busy about in her nighty. Yes. And we can hear the pot covers moving. And all of those things. Because the mic sometimes oh, and we don't even realize. Eh? And we don't realize that we are losing ourselves. We are losing ourselves. We are losing ourselves. One of the crucial, the critical purposes of the church is to help to alleviate some of this disconnect, this disconnection, whichever word you want to use. There are people right under our noses right under our noses who are not connected to the true vine in any meaningful way what are we doing about it hmm? there's a song that says ask the question rather did you tell someone about jesus it says today you walk another mile down the pathway that's leading you home you've met many travelers along the way both strangers and friends that you know and often you've stopped to talk for a while with those you've met on the way. But friends, did you mention the name of the Lord to someone you talked with today? Did you tell someone about Jesus? Did you mention his name to a friend? Did you warn the stranger who is lost and undone that death is the wages of sin? Did you show him the plan of salvation? Did you tell him he's coming again? Did you mention the name of the Lord in the conversations? Do you mention the name of the Lord in the conversations that you have on a day-to-day -day basis? Everybody is not going to be preaching from the pulpit. We are even more effective, may I say, when right in our own little corners, it was said earlier, sounds like cliche, but it is fact. Each one, reach one. Each one, reach one. So as church, we are expected to bear fruit worthy of repentance. The world must be able to look at us and say, they are children of God. They are children of God. And in order for us to bear fruit worthy of repentance, verse 4 of John 15 says, we must be connected to the true vine. We must abide. You hear that word? Abide. It's not a... One touch. Or I connect. I run and I pray because I'm in trouble. I run and I pray and I need a fix. And as soon as we get that fix, we unplug. We unplug. We abide. It means that the connection becomes a daily lifestyle. No branch can bear fruit by itself. Verse 4 says, it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Jesus is the true vine. 
Jesus is the source of our lives. Our very existence depends on him. I can't even walk without him holding my hands. The true vine is the source of life. That's where we get our nourishment. That is where we get our nourishment. There is no vitamin, no mineral, no nothing that can give us what the true vine can give us. Who are we in all of this? We hear that God is the husband man, the vine dresser. He keeps the garden. Jesus is the true vine. Who are we? We are the, we are the branches. You know what that means? So we have God, the vine dresser. We have Jesus, the true vine. We have the fruit over here. The fruit is the end. The fruit is the evidence of what we are doing. But between the fruit and the true vine, the branches. So we are the conduit, the channel to flow from the true vine and into Exactly. How much fruit are we bearing? What, what fruit are we bearing? And this might sound harsh, though, and don't, don't take it personal because this is me at Redeemer, Reverend Bacchus. How many people have we brought into the church recently? How many? And for those of us who have been here long ago, can we say, I'm pressing on the upward way? Are, on we, are we on the same? rung of the ladder that we were on when we first started. How much fruit are we bearing if we are not connected to the true vine? It is inevitable. We will die. We are connecting and ab abiding in the true vine. That's the only way we'll be able to fulfill our purpose. We don't want to end up like Israel. The chosen people and when they fail, God say, all right, I will find other people. Thank God because you and I would not be, <laughs> we would not be here. But we want to ensure that whatever God has called us to be, that is what 
we will be. Can we this morning say, I give myself away? If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. All that I am and everything I ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. Outside of him, we are nothing. Mm. we don't just want to be fruit that look nice on the outside but when you ever get a nice looking apple or to eat the apple or mango very nice and you bite into it and then before long you see some little things wriggling up hmm Beautiful on the outside, but the true test of the fruit, uh, of a good fruit, is not what is happening on the outside. It's what is happening on the inside. So let us not just be nice, beautiful looking Christians. Don't let Jesus have to say to us as he did to the scribes and the Pharisees, you are like whitewashed sepulchres. You look good on the outside, but inside you are dead men's bones. Jesus. Mm. It is a matter of the heart. A matter of the heart. A matter of the heart. And I close with a, a, a thought. It says here is a simple functional definition of a good fruit. <laughs> a good fruit born by a Christian is this. The right deed done the right way with the right motive for the praise of the right one. Jesus. The right deed done the right way with the right motive for the praise of the right one. Jesus. So many of us may be doing the right thing. We may even be doing it the right way, but the motive is self glorification. The motive is self-glorification. I want us to just, just look with me, please, for the very last verse in the passage of scripture that was read. Sis, are you able to find it? Because ultimately, as we meet to pray this morning, is for the pruning to take place. There is a consequence for not bearing fruit. There is a consequence for not bearing fruit, for barrenness. And what is that consequence? It says, let's look at verse 6. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away. And with us, with us, such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. The consequence of being barren, of not bearing fruit. But then on the other side, thanks be to God. Verse 7. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done. 
if you remain in me and my words remain in you ask whatever you wish and it will be done what a way to end what vine am I connected to and what fruit am I bearing as a result of my being connected to that vine the final verse verse 8 says this this is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples so friends many of us may be going through the pruning we may be going through the pruning and the pruning is not comfortable and you're asking yourself God how is it that I am doing what you tell me to do and I am going through so much it is the pruning because there are certain things that must be cut away. Certain things that must be cut away. We must know ourselves in Christ. Before God can get us bearing the fruit. That he desires for us to bear. When all is said and done. We remember that this pruning is only for a season. This pruning is only for a season and at the end of it, we will be more fruitful. On the other hand, if we choose not to ab abide, we'll be cast away and burnt forever. Not for a time, but forever. Let us brothers and sisters recognize that all that we do is for the glory of God. We are conduits, channels of his grace and mercy, channels of his love. And don't we all need love? Don't we all need mercy and forgiveness and grace? Thank you, Jesus. I encourage us brothers and sisters to keep connected to the true vine. Keep connected to the true vine. Keep the prayers going. Keep the word of God implanted in your hearts. Connect yourselves to brothers and sisters who can feed you with positive, positive vibes. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. Always victorious. Always watching over us. A great, big, wonderful God. If you are able to stand, please do so. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. Bless your name, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word to us today. We thank you, almighty God, for reminding us just who you are. You are the vine dresser. You are always taking care. Taking care of us. And God we are so grateful that we have divine connection to the true vine. 
There is no power cut, no short circuit, no line busy, no call back later. You are always ready to hear our cries. We thank you, Almighty God, for positioning our hearts this morning. Because we know that there is more that you require of us. And so God today. We thank you. For emptying us. Of those things that were hindering us bearing fruit. We thank you almighty God. That the pruning has begun. That the dead twigs almighty God. Are being taken off are being severed so that fresh fresh leaves can sprout fresh stems can come on us sweet holy spirit we are in need of you sweet holy spirit we are in need of a fresh touch Revive us again, almighty God. Revive us again. Many of us are drying up by the root. Our leaves are wilting. We are barren. But this morning, God, we pray again that you will nourish us. Nourish us, almighty God. Nourish us with your word this morning, God. Where we are forgetting who you are, remind us, God. When our situations want to take our minds off you, almighty God, remind us. Nourish us again with your word. Remind us, God, you are still the God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything we can ask or even imagine. You are still the God who supplies all our needs according to your riches in glory. Refresh us, God. Refresh us. Water us, almighty God. With your sweet Holy Spirit. Jesus. We want to be blooming for you God. We want to be blooming for you almighty God. We want to see others coming into the fold. As a result of the fruit that we are bearing. God rebuke our slothful ease. Almighty God, set us. Set us ablaze for you. Plant our feet on higher ground, Almighty God. We declare, God, that today is the end of the excuses. Today is the end of the excuses. That we will say, Lord, I'm available to you. Use me, Lord. My storage is empty and I am available to you. Continue, almighty God, to saturate us with your anointing. The anointing that breaks the yoke. Jesus, we surrender. We surrender to the move of the Holy Spirit. We surrender to the move of the Holy Spirit. Whatever you are doing in this season, Lord, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. To you be all honor. All glory, all dominion and power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.